Hey there, fourth graders. So yesterday we talked a lot about the different forms of numbers. We talked about standard form, which is the normal way to write a number, word form, which is the number written out in words, and expanded form, where we are adding together the value of every digit in the number. To, like I said yesterday, we're going to focus today on expanded form because expanded form is the base foundational um, skill that we need to know to help us with the rest of our math. And then I, like I said yesterday, I know that that seems a little weird, right? But when we're writing numbers in expanded form and when we have a really good understanding of expanded form, that means that we have a really good foundation in number sense. And that's really what all of the rest of math is built on. And that's going to help us multiply and divide and work with fractions and decimals and do all kinds of different things with numbers. And so that's why we're going to spend a whole lesson working on that today. So let's take a look at a number. I'm going to start out with a three digit number just to kind of keep it a little bit um, more simple. So let's say we have the number 342. Okay. Now remember, this is standard form. If I wanted to write it in word form, I'd write the words that I just said, 342. But today we're focusing on expanded form. Traditionally, what you've seen for expanded form is we look at each digit, the three, this is in the hundreds place, so we would write 300 plus the four is in the tens place, which means it's worth 40 plus the two that's in the ones place, which means it worth, it's worth two. That's the traditional way to write a number in expanded form. However, there are other ways to write numbers in expanded form. And so to do that, what I want to do is I want to take a, um, a look at, oops, I didn't mean to erase the number, but that's okay. I'll rewrite it. Um, 342 in a place value chart. So I'm going to draw a quick place value chart. Again, I told you I was doing this a lot. Hopefully you are too. All right, this number just has hundreds, tens, ones. I don't need to draw another period because it's only a three digit number, 342. Okay, so we know that the three falls into the hundreds place. That means it's worth 300. Now we could also write this number like this three, the digit, times the place that it's in. It's in the hundreds place plus our next digit, which is a four, times the place that it's in, it's in the tens place, plus the two times the place that it's in, and it's in the ones place. This would be another way to write a number in expanded form, and this is actually moving forward more traditionally what you'll see. Okay, so you've seen it where it's been the 300, let me just write it again up here, plus 40 plus 2. And that's what we practiced yesterday. And this is correct. This is the number written in expanded form. But this down here is also correct. Okay, 3 times 100, so the digit times the place, plus the digit times the place, plus the digit times the place. All right, now. Let's look at this number another way. Okay, so this right here is really also not that complicated. But actually, before we before we do that, I just changed my mind. <laughs> that happens as a teacher sometimes. Let's look at another example. Let's scroll down a little bit and do another example. Same kind of thing. This time we're going to write a little bit bigger number. Let's write uh, 40,387. And you know what? You can even, let me scroll up just a smidgen. You can even take the number as it's written and draw the place value blocks or the place value um, chart right over top of the number, right? This is the hundreds, tens, ones. And then I'm going to draw my comma. And then I have another section or another period that has a hundreds, tens, and ones, right? Okay, so my four is in the ten thousands place. So if I'm going to write it our new way, I'm going to take my digit four times its place. It's in the ten thousands place. It's in the thousands house in the tens place. So it's ten thousand 
plus, all right, I have a zero in the thousands place, which means I don't have to write anything for it because zero times a thousand is zero, right? So I don't have to write anything for the thousands place. I have a three in the hundreds place. So I'm going to write three times 100. And then plus an eight, my digit eight in the tens place. So eight times 10 plus a seven in the ones place. So I do seven times one. Okay. Again, you can see it's just the digit times the place. So don't make this harder than it needs to be. All right. It's just the digit times the place. Now, like I said, I want to show you something else that we can do with numbers. And I know that this may seem a little weird, but stick with me for a second. Okay, here we go. Let me change my color here so that it stands out a little bit more. What if I take two digits? All right. And I do it two digits at a time. This would be the same thing as saying 34. And then what place does the last digit fall into? The tens place. So this would be the same thing as saying 34 tens or 34 times 10. All right. And then I just am going to take my last digit on its own plus two times one. All right. So this is something else that you might see where you see like, wait, wait a second, why, why does it have a two digit number here? Well, that just means that we're looking at the hundreds place and the tens place together. So if it's times 10, that means that the last digit is in the tens place. Okay. If we had it, if we did that here, maybe we would say 40 times a thousand, right? We could say 40 times a thousand. And then the rest of it all the same, right? The rest of the three times 100 plus eight times 10. I'm just going to draw an arrow down for right now. Plus seven times one. We could also even say, like, let's, let's be totally crazy. Let's say we wanted to say 403 times 100, right? That would probably be a little. This is not really something that you would see, but maybe. All right, plus eight times 10, plus seven times one, right? I didn't write the parentheses, but I'll go back and add those. Or what if, check this out, what if we did this? What if we said 40, let's see if I can fit it over here. 40 times a thousand, because you do see that a lot, right? Especially if there's a zero in the, in the place, 40 times a thousand plus 38 times 10 plus seven times one. Okay, that's another way to represent this number in expanded form. Notice if I didn't have my place value chart, that would probably be really difficult. My place value chart really helps me out with this. So let me scroll down and show you an example. So you might see a problem that would say, select all, right? We see that in math a lot. Select all, that means that there's more than one right multiple choice question. Select all numbers that are all answers that show, um, let's say, 36,219 in expanded form. And you have five answer choices down below. Okay. So let's say that you had A says our more, most traditional three times 10,000 plus six times a thousand. All right, plus, and then we're going to keep going two times 100. Oops, sorry, my mouse got a little crazy there. Let me just, oh my goodness, let me erase that. Let me fix that. That looks, that looks too crazy. <laughs> 
it's not easy to write with your mouse, guys. I feel like I've gotten pretty good over the years, but I, I apparently can't write two times 100 right now. Oops. Oh, my goodness. Ah! Things are going crazy. Plus 1 times 10 plus um, 9 times 1. Right? That would be one way that we could do it. Now, that way, or if we have the our, our very, very traditional way, let's say choice B is 30,000, right? That's how we like to see it. 30,000 plus 6,000 plus 200 plus 10 plus nine. Again, if we have our place value chart drawn over top of it, that really helps us out. Okay, I'm gonna just draw it quick. We have our hundreds, tens, ones, comma. You see how quick this is to draw over a number, by the way? It doesn't take any time at all, but it just kind of helps you to see the number a little bit easier. All right, another way, now we're going to start grouping sections of the number together. And we can do it either in this multiplication format or in this traditional format. So I'm going to again switch to col different colors to help us see, okay? What if I wanted to group my 36,000 together? So I could write it as 36 times 1,000 and then the rest of the number plus 2 times 100 plus, if I look like I'm concentrating really hard, it's because I am. <laughs> I'm writing numbers, I'm writing things with my mouse and that's not easy to do. 1 times 10 plus 9 times 1, or this could also be written as 36,000 plus 200 plus 10 plus 9. So you see, it's another way to write it. What could be another way to write it? I want you guys to pause the video right now and see if you can find another way to write this number, 36,219 in expanded form. All right. Okay. Let's see if you came up with this way. What if I wanted to group my 21 right here together? Okay, so I could say, I have to scroll down, but we're going to say, let's keep, I, I'm going to keep 36,000 grouped together. But now I'm also going to group the 210 together, right? That's what that part is right there. It's two, 21 tens, which is 210, 21 tens plus nine. All right, so that's another way I could have done it. Or again, you could have done the 36 times 1,000. plus 21, whoops, times 10, plus 9 times 1. Okay, so yet another way that you could have done this. Um, you could even combine together your, right here, that section, right? We could say 19 ones. So you might say 36,000s, 200s, and 19 ones. So there's so many different ways that you can do it. Today, what you're going to do is I'm going to give you numbers, and I want you to list as many different versions of expanded form for that number as you can. I'm going to give you um, a target amount. I want you to come up with at least five different ways to write every number in expanded form. Are there more than five different ways? Yes, right here I just wrote one, two, three, four, five, six, and I just said seven, eight more ways, right? So there's so many different ways that you can do it.
All right, I want you to come up with at least five different ways that you can write each of these numbers in expanded form. Think about the value of the digits. Use your place value chart to help you and group things together. You can use different colors like I did. That makes it a lot easier to see and for it to stand out. All right, and then I will see you guys in your next lesson. Bye, guys.